Hi, I'm Mary, and this is Dreamy Goat Design Studio, and this video is on, uh, well, on some simple shibori techniques. This video is also the last video we'll be doing in our uh, study group of all things blue, in other words, our focus on indigo. And I'm a little sad about that, but at the same time, I'm very hopeful because I think we've had a good start in looking at indigo, making indigo vats, and today looking at some shibori techniques. Okay, let's regroup for a minute though before we look at the shibori techniques. Let's talk a little bit about the um, indigo, excuse me, the ferrous sulfate vat, which I like very much, but I want to put a little bit of a qualifi uh, qualifier on it this morning. First of all, let's take a look at this vat. This is a very out of balance vat. You don't want, ever want a vat to look like that? Way too blue. Will I rebalance it this morning? No, I won't. Therefore, I won't be doing any dipping today. I've done all my dipping for a little while. But to review, let me show you what I've learned about this particular vat, the ferrous sulfate vat, which I really like. Remember this pennant from Dharma Trading with the little star on the bottom? This was dipped for 15 minutes. This was dipped for a second 15 minutes and this was dipped for a third 15 minutes. Now these have all been washed and dried, and look at the difference in color. That's because I made too small of a vat. And I'll show you how, how small it was, because after these pennants, I kept putting in cotton streamers. By the time I got to my last set of cotton streamers, which I dipped for just five minutes, I got this, way too light. So originally, I made this vat for, what was it, 20 grams of indigo, therefore 40 grams of the ferrous sulfate, 60 of the calcium hydroxide. If I were going to do this again, I would probably start out with 100 grams of the indigo and go from there, 100, 200, 300 respectively. So this is what I've learned from this vat. I need to make it bigger if I want to dip a lot. Um, what I did though was I did rebalance it in order to do the shibori techniques. I only put in, um, let's see, what I did is I used this again, okay, and I put in 15 grams of indigo, 30 of the ferrous sulfate, 45 of the calcium hydroxide, excuse me, and poured it right in here. And it worked very well for my purposes. But now it's kind of a dead, defunct vat. So let me just show you what I have done for the shibori techniques. And let me also qualify um, about these shibori techniques. Um, I was playful when I did it. Um, I was just kind of wanting to throw some stuff into my active vat. And what I got is uh, clearly without much discipline, without much control, but a lot of fun. And I think it does illustrate for you who are brand new at uh, doing anything with shibori, it illustrates for you what the possibilities might be. Now, for those of you who are true shibori artists, and I know you're out there, please don't cringe too much in the next few minutes. If you are one of those experienced shibori artists, I strongly recommend this book if you don't already have it. It's by Yoshiko Iwamoto Wada, who is the mover and the shaker of the shibori movement, which has researched in the last 20, uh, 20 years. This one is Shibori, the Inventive Art of Japanese Shaped Resist Dyeing. And look at, it is very academic. It truly is the um, seminal tome on uh, Japanese Shibori. But look at the various patterns, okay? And also something kind of cool in the back. Um, look at this. This is matter. The point being is that you can use Shibori techniques in any natural dye pot. You don't have to have an indigo vat, although it is classically associated with indigo. This isn't me. This is me. In fact, I used this simple book uh, for the techniques I'm going to show you in just a minute. A Handbook of Indigo Dyeing by Vivienne Prideau. Um, don't look for this cover. You won't find it this way because it has been reprinted since this copy. It looks different, but you can order it on Amazon.com. And like I said, it's very accessible, and I've used it for my own 
patterns that I'm going to show you right now. So let's take a look at what I did. Okay, first of all, I tried clamping, which means I took two acrylic squares, I folded up some cotton lawn, which is some lightweight cotton, folded it up, uh, kind of accordion pleated it, sandwiched it between these two squares, put clamps around it, dipped it in my vat, and I think it was about 15 minutes before I pulled it out. Now, this is what I did, this is what I got, and this is definitely part of my learning curve. I really like the idea of window panes, but this clearly was not a success. Okay, so I learned one is that one, um, I didn't expose enough fabric. The pane, this acrylic pane, just covered up too much of the fabric. And I'm going to show you how I've done this second time at the very end of this video. That was my first one. My second one, I'm not even sure if you would call it shibori. This is definitely kid play now. I just took a length of the cotton lawn, I put rubber bands in various places, and I knotted it in various places. And when I opened it all up, this is what I got. I haven't washed it, clearly haven't ironed it, but if you look at some of the patterns, they're fun, they're interesting, might look good on a t-shirt, and <laughs> so easy a little tiny kid or grandkid could do it with you. Okay, my third attempt was, an, this is an actual shibori technique, although I don't know its name. But if you look at this, you take something like a marble, a pebble, a button, in this case this is a tagwa button, and you wrap rubber bands around it. That will create the negative space where the indigo can't get to it. I seem to have two rubber bands here. And maybe I should cut this to make it a little faster. But um, what you get are these wonderful circles of white. Okay, so here's my Tagwa button. Tagwa is a vegetal ivory. It's from a palm, a date palm. Uh, we got it, we got these buttons last time we were in Ecuador. Uh, this has already been pre dyed before, so it, it doesn't need to pick up the blue. But look what they make. Aren't they fun? You can keep them three dimensional, but I will wash them, wash it, and um, press it. And we'll end up with some wonderful circles. So there's a lot of promise with this particular technique, which is clearly very easy to do. Okay, my next technique. I guess is arguably a flop, but I consider it the most promising. Now let me show you what I saw in this book. I saw this photo. Now this dark blue is too dark for my purposes, okay? Because this is a blue that comes from a, a, a bat that uses far uh, more aggressive chemicals than our little friendly chemicals. But I liked the white blobs. So I did what the book told me to do. I made a paste, and let me show you uh, kind of what the paste looks like. This is, what is this? This is flour, uh, regular flour, rice flour, and it was supposed to be powdered laundry starch, but I couldn't find any powdered form. I just found aerosol cans. So I added cornstarch. And then I painted this on with, uh, using like a cheese spreader, I think, painted it on to my fabric. And then I did, <laughs> was so careful, I dipped it into this vat. I let it dry, of course. Dipped it into this vat, making sure that the paste did not wash off. Let it sit for 15 minutes or so. Pulled it out, and all the paste was gone. So I ended up with this. Not exactly what I was imagining, but you know what? There's great promise in this. I keep saying that, don't I, about all my techniques. Um, the paste did last long enough to get little washed out white blobs, not distinct, 
certainly no control over the way I applied the blobs. But I'm going to try this again because I think this is exciting. And by the way, if you want to see what a stain from the uh, fabric touching the sediment looks like, I think we're looking at a couple right here. The sediment on the bottom. I think it hit the bottom. So after this, well, I did a little bit more dipping, and I'm going to show you that in a minute. But I also threw in a couple of, well, actually three, silk chiffon scarves. Now, don't get too excited when you see these, because by this time, my vat was out of balance, I could tell, and I thought, oh, to heck with it, I'll just throw these in. I have this most beautiful turquoise. I fully predict that this will wash out when I um, go to wash them. I'll show you the results if I can. But I also wanted to show you, and this was yellow to begin with, therefore green, um, when dipped in the, in the indigo. But I also wanted to show you the spottiness of this. I think there was a lot of this gooey paste floating around in the vat because look what happened to these guys here. Kind of kind of curious, huh? I like, kind of like them. So these are my first attempts, actually my second attempts at Shibori, but so long ago was the first that I am completely unpracticed now. Very, very basic, but I think they give you an idea of some of the possibilities that you can pursue on your own. Let me show you two more things though before we close this video. Last weekend, Roger and I went to the California Wool and Fiber Festival and we met up with an old friend, Samba Mambao from Senegal. He and his wife have a booth there at the festival um, and they carry a lot of African goods. And in his great generosity, he gave this to Roger and to me. Now this is a common man's shibori and I say common because the fabric itself is not all that high quality and it also crocks terribly and I'm going to show you this in a minute but if you look at this look at the different patterns in the wide vertical stripes and then look at these little tiny ticks which I absolutely love and if you're wondering what those things are that are sticking out those are some of the plastic threads that they've used uh, for their stitching and you will notice in my samples I didn't do any stitching and I didn't do any pull wrapping because of those both of those are very uh, time consuming and uh, techniques and they require a bit of concentration and discipline neither of which I had when I was doing my dipping but I really like this in particular because of this you can take a look at this close up you may see the copper sheen here on this fabric now watch this Voila, do you see the blue? It is going to crock greatly. Uh, Samba told me to wash this in three parts water to one part vinegar, which I will do, and I'll see if I can get most of the crocking, or most of the excess indigo out. But I am very fond of this. This is a beloved piece for our collection. And, and women in Last. Women in crocking. Women in crocking, Roger just said. What about women in crocking? The women won't buy it if oh, it yes, doesn't crock. Oh yes, 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 and I think I've written this to the group. Um, there are many parts in Africa where the women will go to the market looking for shibori pieces and they will not buy it if it doesn't crock because they know it's an artificial blue and it's trying to pass itself off as indigo. The other thing is this, um, indigo does fade, okay? Not terribly, but it does fade. And I have read as well that many of the women just assume it's going to fade and they will bring their indigo goods back to the market to be redipped on regular occasions. So it's kind of like a com community thing we got going here. Last thing, let's take a look at what I did with clamping again. Now, instead of using the um, acrylic squares, I used an oval and I, these are the clamps I used. I got these from Harbor Freight. They actually work pretty darn well. And I should tell you too, if I have the copy, yes I do. I just checked this morning. She is still very active. So if you were looking for uh, these acrylic plates in all different shapes and sizes, Rossi is the person to go to on her Etsy site. So now Let's see what we have. This is going to be exciting. This I did last night. Left it just outside overnight. It's still wet. I 
guess I should have some gloves on, but oh well. So I take one of the ovals off. Look at that. The other oval off. Look at that. And let's see if we can open this up. I think. Oh, ho, 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 ho. yes, indeed. A little bit better than the window pane. What? Yes. Yes. Very sweet. Very sweet indeed. Okay, I'm excited. I'm also excited to know that I have um, shared with you most, if not all, of my knowledge on Indigo and on Shibori. And I am just thrilled that um, you will take it, uh, play with it all, and hopefully pass it forward. Okay, so I'm going to say goodbye now, and thank you, and I will see you very soon, and happy dying.